I'm going to have the pleasure to introduce our speaker today, which is Tim Urban, who joined the Institute in October of last year, where he is a research associate, and he also serves as the director of NASA's Texas Space Grant Consortium, and he's been running since 2017. And prior to joining us at UTIC, he was a research associate at the Center for Space Research, kind of across the, the highway. And prior to that, he did his bachelor's and master's in aerospace engineering from the University of Illinois and his PhD in aerospace engineering from UT Austin. And as part of that work, he was involved with the Topex Poseidon and Jason 1 science teams, as well as the ISAT science team and the ISAT 2 science definition team. And since joining the Institute, we've also recruited him to be involved with the Reason Instrument on Europa Clipper. But today he's going to be telling us about the Texas Space Grant Consortium. So with that, I'll pass it to Tim. So welcome. Thank you, Krista. Testing, one, two, three. All right. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here at the Institute. Um, as Krista said, I've been here since October, um, and we are just getting up and running on all of our projects again. Uh, I've also brought over my assistant director, Talia Jurgen, sitting there in the back. Wave, Talia. Um, so we are very happy to be here at the Institute. Uh, today, I'm going to give an overview of what Space Grant is on the national scale as well as the Texas scale. Uh, talk about some of our programs that we support, some of the projects that we run with students, um, and give you an overview of uh, the Artemis mission, what NASA is doing as well, since that is our mission. There we go. Okay, so the full name of Space Grant is the National Space Grant College and Fellowship Program. Um, in the 80s, there was a senator from Texas, Lloyd Benson, um, who decided to introduce this program to try to increase the number of science and engineering graduates uh, in the United States. Uh, so it was formulated uh, sort of like the Sea Grant and Land Grant programs. Um, where scholarships would be given to students uh, based on their space grant status. Uh, in this case, every single state has a space grant plus DC and Puerto Rico. Uh, so we have 52 jurisdictions around the nation. Uh, we also have Guam and US Virgin Islands. They're paired with Hawaii and South Carolina. So everywhere there's an institute of higher education in the United States, uh, there is a space grant. Uh, administration was handed over to NASA in 1989, um, and it took about 30 years until 2019 uh, for the language to be updated. So Space Grant is a line item in the congressional uh, budget every year. Um, we got the language updated in 2019. Uh, whenever NASA gets reauthorized, we get reauthorized as well, and we're hoping for another language update in, uh, in the near future. Uh, so the goals, as you as you see, are, uh, <laughs> are to uh, increase the education, research, and funding uh, of not just space, but all STEM, STEM areas that uh, relate to space. Okay, so we are part of NASA's Office of STEM Engagement. Uh, NASA itself gets about less than 1% of the federal budget. Uh, Office of STEM Engagement gets about half a percent of NASA's budget, um, and Space Grant itself gets about 40% of the Office of STEM Engagement's budget. Uh, so it's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction. Um, because it is uh, a senatorial program, every single jurisdiction gets the same funding. So Texas gets the same as Wyoming, gets the same as California, gets the same as Rhode Island. Um, we get about 900000 uh, this past year. Um, and roughly a third of all the money we get has to be given directly away in terms of fellowships um, and scholarships and internships. In 2019, we celebrated our 30th anniversary. Um, the space grant program is set up where the directors of all the consortia meet twice a year. Uh, in the spring, it's always in Washington, DC. So to cap off our 30 year anniversary party, um, we had this big event in March 2020. Um, 
that was our last big party. We didn't see each other in person for a couple of years. And all of our affiliates, uh, every state has an affiliate network. Uh, they're in universities, colleges, plus industry, government, museums, nonprofits, wherever there's an interest in STEM and space, they can become an affiliate uh, of that space grant. So stepping back a bit, oop, I keep going backwards. Forward, there we go. Um, every other year, there's a regional meeting. Um, so Space Grant is broken into five regions. Um, last fall, Texas hosted the Western Regional Meeting. Uh, it's 19 states on the Western half of the US. Uh, we had representatives from all 19 states, uh, plus half a dozen of the other states around the nation. Um, we had two days where people shared their programs, their projects. Um, we got to visit Johnson Space Center. Uh, we got a tour of the, the big giant pool down at NASA Johnson Space Center, the neutral buoyancy lab. Um, and uh, we had a good time. Uh, this is our guest speaker uh, for our dinner, uh, astronaut Mike Fossum, uh, posing there with a student. And next to uh, Tomas Gonzalez Torres, he's the NASA program manager for Space Grant. All right, so on the national scale, it's a pretty big complicated uh, group. Uh, so we have three committees. We have the executive committee who runs the program. Uh, we have the National Space Grant Alliance uh, with works with our state and federal government to get support. And we have the National Space Grant Foundation, uh, which works with the private sector to try to get additional funding, uh, as well as providing administrative support for all the jurisdictions. And if you go to that spacegrant.org website, uh, you can see all the uh, activities that are going around uh, the nation, that national network, um, as well as it's got a little store there. So a plug for our store, uh, we get funding from that. Um, back to Texas now. So currently we have 62 different affiliates, 47 academic. Um, six of those are community college networks, and a little over half now are minority serving institutions. Every year more MSIs are designated, so we expect that number to go up uh, significantly. Texas is unique in that it actually has two space grant colleges. So when it was set up, UT and AM um, would not budge. So they are both designated space grant colleges. Uh, the director is designated as the uh, person at UT Austin, uh, and then the chair of the board is at Texas A&M. Uh, so right now the chair of our board is former astronaut <clears throat> Greg Chamatov at Texas A&M, and we have eight board members. Uh, UT gets the director and associate director. Uh, A&M gets the chair and an associate director, and then we have four others elected from the other academic institutions. Um, right now we have someone from uh, UT Arlington, San Jacinto College and Prairie View A&M, um, as well as the Texas uh, Higher Education Coordinating Board. All right, on to our programs. So this is a sample uh, of logos for all the programs that we provide. Um, as I said, we have to give away about a third of our money in terms of scholarships, fellowships, and internships. Um, we do a lot with higher education. I'll talk about, in particular, this design challenge program and our spacecraft challenge programs. Um, and then we do K through 12 outreach as well. Um, we've got this SSEP, that's the Student Space Floyd Experiments Program. Um, that's a program run by Washington, D.C. Space Grant. Um, they provide uh, outreach to school districts to run a contest to fly experiments on the International Space Station. Uh, so they put out feelers, uh, school districts who want to apply can apply, they have to raise their own funds. Uh, Texas Space Grant supports usually the, the Title I schools in Texas that want to apply. Um, and it's a huge event for these ISDs. Uh, they get K through 12 involved. Um, and sometimes you can have a third grader that gets their experiment sent up to the space station. It, it's a pretty neat program. Um, liftoff, oops, there we go. The Liftoff Summer Institute, uh, that's a teacher professional development program. 
every year, uh, about 50 teachers from across the nation now, this has gone nationwide, uh, gather in Houston uh, to work on curriculum, uh, share curriculum, and then take it back to their school districts um, and spread STEM and space curriculum. Uh, there were a couple programs. Uh, it was called uh, Angels, Apollo Next Giant Leap Student Challenge. Um, and now it's called Ro uh, Roads Rover Observation and Drone Survey on Mars. Uh, so for the 50th anniversary of the Apollo landing, uh, that first uh, Angels program was dreamed up. Um, so it lets middle school and high school robotics teams uh, come up with a combined ro uh, uh, robotic rover and drone uh, system. And then they have to navigate a little course, uh, pick up samples, test the samples to see what kind of rocks or chemicals they are uh, and bring it back. Uh, so that's been a popular program since it was initiated. Uh, that's run by Washington State Space Grant. Um, Texas Space Grant has funded some zero robotics teams. If you're not familiar with that, uh, those are those are about basketball sized robots that float on the International Space Station and the students get to control them up there. So that's pretty neat. Um, we have a summer internship program uh, called SEAS, the STEM Enhancement and Earth Science Program. Uh, that's gone nationwide as well. Uh, it's a program where students spend a, a two week uh, internship uh, over at the Center for Space Research now. Uh, learning about all different projects that CSR and NASA Johnson Space Center uh, do. Uh, we have a similar program we support at Texas A&M called Camp SOAR and lots of other K through 12 programs. All right, I'm gonna focus the rest of my talk on the right side, uh, the right-hand side of those logos. Those are all our higher education uh, programs. Okay. Uh, first, let me start with the internships, fellowships, and scholarships. Um, so as I mentioned, Texas gets the same as Wyoming, as the Rhode Island, as all the other states. Uh, so we try to spread the money uh, around as much as possible. Um, Texas has 1.5 million college students, so we can't give everyone 20 cents. Um, so we give uh, a select few 2,000 for undergrad scholarships and 5,000 for graduate fellowships. Um, our Scholarships are the Columbia Crew Memorial Scholarships. We've gotten uh, a license plate, the Columbia Remembered license plate in Texas. If you see that, uh, if you see it in the parking lot, that's my car. Um, we get some money from that to support these scholarships. Uh, we give out 20 to 25 every year, uh, depending on the, the number of applications we get. Graduate fellowships uh, are $5,000, um, about 20 each year. In addition to the money we get from NASA, uh, we are supposed to cost match a lot of that money. Um, so we require students getting the fellowships to have funding in place from their university. So that gets cost matched. So we're hopefully at least doubling uh, what they're getting at their university. <clears throat> uh, and then finally, NASA internships. Um, Texas is, is a large state. Um, we have over 700 applications that go through the NASA internship application system every year. Um, NASA picks out a handful for us to support, and depending if they're summer or long semester, uh, undergraduate or graduate, they're about seven to 14,000. Um, we've budgeted about five each year. Uh, lately, we've gotten augmentation fund increases uh, to add to that. So I'm hoping this year we can triple that and have about 15 interns. Uh, we're looking beyond NASA now. So other research and industry possibilities. Um, in fact, we're gonna have three students this summer here at UTIG um, from uh, the Texas A&M Kingsville and Laredo College. Uh, they have a partnership and they're gonna provide us three students uh, to come here and work this summer. All right, let me step back a bit. This is where we send our interns. <clears throat> we can send them to any of the 10 NASA centers around the country, um, sometimes headquarters as well. Uh, we don't send them to the NASA Shared Services Center. Uh, they would not stay in STEM if they, we sent them there. Um, but we have had students go to all of these centers. Um, all of the student projects, uh, whether it's 
going to the NASA Center or one of our other higher education projects, uh, we were required to categorize that in our reports as to what mission directorate it falls under. So NASA has these five mission directorates now, aeronautics research, essentially anything going through the atmosphere, um, science, SMD, you're probably most familiar with SMD. Um, the formerly called uh, human exploration has been split up into space operations um, and exploration systems development. And I'll explain a bit more about that on the next slide. Um, and then finally, the space technology, everything having to do with hardware. So I mentioned uh, we had a Western regional meeting uh, last fall. Uh, we have students come to our annual meetings. Uh, this time we had six students with a variety of, of STEM topics. It's not all going to the moon and Mars. Um, we've got a couple based on uh, uh, the biologic side. Uh, we've got one earth science. Uh, we've got one about education, uh, STEM student ambassador program. Um, and then we've got, I love that first one from the upper Paleolithic to Alpha Centauri, 10,000 years to the settlement of our galactic neighborhood. Um, that, was, that was quite an impressive topic. Um, so let me focus now, since we are funded by NASA, uh, I'm gonna talk about the Artemis uh, and, and Mars missions. And I'm gonna let some students talk about that and the challenges uh, that are available from NASA. NASA's Artemis mission will land the first woman and the first person of color on the moon. And today's students are the Artemis generation. If you're a student, you can design and build technologies that support the Artemis mission with NASA's Artemis student challenges. No matter your background or experience, you're invited to choose a challenge that interests you, whether it's rock. Robots. Tool. Software. Vehicles. Or other technologies, there's an exciting challenge for you. To find a mentor and build a team of students. Review the rules and requirements. And bring your ideas to life with NASA's Artemis Student Challenges. Visit stem.nasa.gov slash Artemis and see how you can join one of NASA's mission-related student challenges. All right, I have to brag on uh, one of the students there uh, the one who said the word rockets. Uh, she was one of our interns for that SEAS program a few years ago. Uh, she came from Oregon. Uh, we recruited her to spend those two weeks there. She had a great time um, working on ISAT with me. Uh, then she went to University of Colorado, couldn't convince her to stay here at UT. She went to University of Colorado, got involved with that space grant. Uh, then she started working with one of these challenges called the Glee Challenge, which I'll talk about later at Colorado. Uh, then she got an internship at JPL, and just last week I saw her at JPL. She's working on the Europa Clipper mission as well. So that, that was a, a, a great story. Uh, it's the reason why we're here is to get the students uh, into STEM, staying in STEM, and, and getting into space. So here is the, the outline of uh, the Artemis mission. Um, so the Space Operations Mission Directorate um, is really focused on International Space Station, commercial low Earth orbit, and these private astronaut mi missions. Uh, they're called operations. It's more or less operational. It's still not easy, uh, but we've done it many times before. Uh, then the exploration side gets Orion out to the moon uh, for commercial and uh, NASA's Gateway Space Station. Uh, that's going to be a space station around the moon um, in a uh, it's called a rectilinear halo orbit. We'll always be able to see it. Um, and it's gonna be smaller than the ISS, uh, but that'll be the staging point for astronauts to visit the moon and eventually uh, moon to Mars. 
All right, here's uh, an eye chart. Um, we've got the timeline of the different Artemis missions. Um, we've got what mission directorate is leading that, whether it's exploration or science or uh, space technology. Um, last November, Artemis One was launched, sent back some nice pictures of itself next to the moon. That was successful. So 2024, just next year now, we're gonna send a crewed mission around the moon. 25, that's when they actually land. And then a few years later, uh, four, five, six, they will start delivering the gateway parts. And then by the end there, uh, 2031 is the first habitat uh, on the moon. So that is the Artemis plan. And that is what a lot of these NASA challenges uh, are about, uh, as well as the student projects. Uh, these are eight of the student challenges that are called Artemis student challenges now. Uh, the ones with the state of Texas on them, uh, those are the ones that we have been involved with supporting students, um, either directly through our design challenge program, which I'll talk about, um, or uh, indirectly um, with uh, uh, funding and support. All right, the design challenge program. So this is a Texas program. Um, we want you, students, uh, form a team, choose a topic, add a faculty advisor, apply online. Uh, it's not just rocket science. We have topics spanning everything from Earth to Mars. Uh, so this is the program I've been in charge of since 2013, uh, how I got uh, integrated into Texas Space Grant. Um, and it's been a real joy. We've got uh, teams that we have uh, around the state. Uh, we select about 20 teams uh, around the state every semester. Usually they are senior level capstone engineering teams, uh, but not always. Um, we've got some freshman teams. We've got some that are doing it not as a class, just independently. Um, we've had a great, great showing from Texas Women's University, their kinesiology department. Um, I'll show some slides about that later. Uh, it, it's really a, a great program that, that we we're fortunate to support. Um, and we provide the funding for the hardware if they need to do that. And at the end of semester presentations, we, we call it our, our showcase event. Um, so the topics primarily come from NASA Johnson Space Center. Um, we put out about 30 topics each semester, um, including those NASA challenges. All those Artemis challenges are a part of our program as well. We try to get the teams um, up and running sooner, uh, get them a little kickstart to apply to those programs. Uh, the timing works that they can work on our uh, design challenge in the fall uh, and then apply to those programs, say October through March. And they hopefully have a better chance of getting uh, selected by NASA to participate. All right. Uh, Teams really have to work together well. They have to choose a team leader, talk about communications, who's going to do the uh, uh, the timing for the project. They have project management. Uh, they have a lot of um, a lot of work to do as a team, uh, especially the one semester teams. They have to get going very quickly um, and wrap up very quickly. Um, they have to create a name and a patch. Uh, these are some examples of all the patches that they've come up with. Uh, they're very creative. Uh, students have great ideas. Uh, the names as well, they're always clever, clever names. Um, and then they have to uh, perform. So they, they have to provide weekly updates to us. Um, after about two months, it's their midterm report already. Uh, after three months, it's our showcase event. Um, they have to do a poster and a video. Um, that changed drastically in 2020. So we were all geared up to do an in-person uh, showcase <clears throat> and then we couldn't. Uh, so we had everybody record themselves uh, and just present that online. So since then that's evolved. We've just got them doing a one minute promotional video for their topic. Uh, so if you search uh, design challenge uh, videos on YouTube, you'll be able to see uh, dozens of those videos by, by student teams. Um, end of the semester, they give us a final report, um, and they're also required to do outreach, either to their university, to uh, K through 12, scouting unit, um, 
public event, library, uh, wherever, just promote uh, space and, and STEM. All right, here's an example, uh, just a random list of topics. Some of them apply to low earth orbit uh, for astronauts, um, like lighting control or uh, alarm system sonification. Um, some are health related, mitigating shoulder pain, back pain, headaches, things like that. Uh, thermal management systems. Um, then things for the, the space station or the future gateway. Um, shielding, radar systems, um, communication. Uh, a lot of communication systems, um, how to do internet and in space. Um, and then for bases, you're talking about how to recycle your materials, uh, in situ research util utilization, um, tools for collecting samples, uh, these uh, dust tolerant uh, pivot mechanism and the loose sample device. Those are uh, NASA Artemis challenges called Micro G Next. Uh, students get to build a tool, and then if it's chosen, uh, test it in the neutral buoyancy lab. Astronauts test it down there. And then I'll show you later, one of them was actually successful in sending it to space. All right, uh, here's a, a picture of the showcase. So we have it every semester at Johnson Space Center. Um, we have a guest speaker. Um, I could not say more about Fred Hayes. He came one semester, Apollo 13 astronaut. Uh, I think that was the highlight of, of my, uh, my career here <laughs> in terms of guest speakers. Um, we always have guest speakers though that, that are great um, from NASA, either engineers uh, working on the uh, spacesuits. Uh, we've had Apollo, uh, an engineer who worked on Apollo 13. Uh, that was interesting as well. Um, so day one, uh, the students all have a big showcase where they get to see each other's posters and models. Uh, day two, they do their oral presentations. And then we give them feedback as well. Um, so the faculty that come uh, have a little scorecard and they write down feedback and, and score each of the teams. The teams score each other as well. Um, we um, aggregate all those scores. And then at the end of the evening, um, we give student scholarships to the top teams. So some of that funding that we have for the internships, fellowships, and scholarships we reserve for this program, uh, we give out about $15,000 every semester uh, to these students specifically. All right, since 2002, uh, this has been running since 2002. I've been involved since 2013. Uh, we've had more than 20 schools participate, um, roughly half of our affiliates. Um, almost 500 teams now. At the beginning, there were just two, three, four teams that would participate a semester. Now we've got 20 per semester and more than 25, 2,400 students have come through the program as well now. Uh, let me show you now just a few of the, the examples. So here's an engineering team from Texas A&M Kingsville. Um, they're of course working in engineering. They know how to do finite element analysis, but they've never done it for NASA, right? So that's the key is that these teams, these schools, these students might not have an opportunity to work on a project for NASA. Um, so here's a lunar outpost they got to design and uh, run their deformation analysis on it. Um, the opportunity is just tremendous for these, these students. Um, here's a team from A&M. Um, they were tasked to come up with a deploying lunar uh, antenna mast. And what they had an idea for was something like a tape measure where it's all rolled up and then it just unrolls like that, just a, a, a stiff metal uh, sheet. Uh, so that's where they got their inspiration for that. Uh, let's see, Texas A&M Kingsville again, uh, the Javelina Space Quad. <laughs> love their names, love their logo. Uh, again, we're going back to the moon. Um, we're gonna have rovers again. Uh, this time they're gonna have to carry more stuff. So they were charged with designing a cargo carrier, um, making it as sturdy as possible, but again, as light as possible. Um, initial Mars base. We've had several teams work on different aspects of a Mars base. 
uh, this team from Houston Community College, it was HCC's first semester with us. Um, they decided to work on the furniture. They said, all right, we need to bring furniture to the station. We need to make it as light as possible. Uh, so they came up with a paper origami system um, that would actually be used for a bed. So that they, they figured out how to fold it, um, tested it structurally. I mean, it holds 500 more pounds. Um, it was really an impressive, impressive project um, with very little direction uh, as far as a, a specific uh, task. Uh, the creativity is boundless. Um, again, another one, um, they were just designed to come up with a multimotor exercise device. Multimotor meaning you can use it for for different things, for your arms, for your legs, whatever you want to do. Sending big weights up is not practical. That costs a lot of money. Um, tension in some strings does not always work. That can wear out. So what they came up with was a magnetic system. Very strong magnets. You just dial in how much tension you want. Um, and then it provides that, uh, that tension for the exercise system. Just absolutely brilliant students. All right, Texas Women's University. Um, they've had five or six teams uh, since they've been participating. I love that logo. That's my favorite logo uh, that they've come up with. Um, but they're always doing something to uh, help astronauts. But of course, it would also help us here on Earth. Um, that technology transfer is important as well. Um, the great thing about these projects is that they're all kinesiology majors. And yet, so there's a, a device for, uh, that they made for goggles for um, the last topic there, circadian rhythm desynchronization. Um, so that just means trying to make sure their, their sleep pattern is correct. So they developed these goggles that would show either red or blue light, depending on the time of day. Um, they wouldn't have to wear it all the time, just they figured out how long an astronaut would need to wear it. But th they went beyond kinesiology, right? They had to go to uh, the maker lab, manufacture those. They had to learn welding. They had to or soldering. They had to learn programming. Um, they get a really wide variety of uh, learning out of these projects. All right, um, MIDIC, uh, that's another Artemis challenge. Uh, it's a minority tech transfer competition. Um, so they're supposed to take a NASA um, intellectual property and apply it to something on Earth. So this team from Houston Clear Lake um, is trying to come up with a way to develop a fire protection shelter. So especially with all the wildfires we're having lately in the West, um, a lot of those firefighters find themselves in a situation where they, they just have to take shelter. They can't get away. Um, the current shelters, I guess, are not fully adequate. Um, but if you've got the materials that can survive space, can survive re-entry, um, taking some of those and applying that to these shelters uh, is what this team is going to do. All right, uh, NASA suits, another Artemis challenge. Uh, Texas A&M uh, routinely has a, a team called the 12th astronaut uh, that applies to this. It's all about um, augmented reality for astronauts. So SUITS is an acronym, of course, it stands for Spacesuit User Interface Technologies for Students. Um, and they come up with different heads up displays for the astronauts, um, whether it's a path that uh, they have to walk when they're uh, exploring the moon, um, or they've got something, they develop something called a whiteboard where somebody back at the base or even at mission control can write on their screen and the astronaut would see it. Hey, go look at this rock. Okay, I'll go there. All right, and finally, um, Lone Star College. They've been participating five or six years. Uh, they participated in the design challenge as a Kickstarter to the MicroG Next Artemis challenge. Uh, they had their tool uh, tested in the neutral buoyancy lab. NASA selected it to continue with their program. And then eventually it was tested um, in space. It got to go up to the International Space Station um, astronaut Chris Cassidy uh, got to use it. I think it was a 
gamma ray spectrometer or something like that, that they had to um, unconnect zip ties up on the external uh, outside of the space station. You don't want things just flying around, right? You can't just cut the zip tie and let it fly away. You've got to be able to put a tool there, grab it, cut it, and make sure it doesn't float away. And you have to be able to do that in astronaut gloves. Um, so there were at least 20 teams that applied uh, tools to this program. Uh, Lone Star College was selected. Uh, they got to go watch the launch um, and it was really impressive. Um, that was a few years ago. Now the next challenge is actually installing a zip tie cutter <laughs> or installing a zip tie. Um, University of Houston, Houston Clear Lake uh, has this little design now um, for uh, installing a zip tie in space. Uh, and they made a little cardboard um, model of it uh, last fall. Uh, it worked pretty well. So uh, they're continuing this spring. We'll see what they come up with. All right, uh, another Artemis challenge I didn't talk about uh, yet was called the Big Idea Challenge. Big, of course, is an acronym, Breakthrough, Innovative, and Game Changing. Uh, these are larger projects that NASA wants, uh, uh, wants teams to propose for. Uh, they're like fifty dollars to $100,000 if, if they get it. Uh, we've had a lot of teams apply. Unfortunately, none of them have received it yet, uh, but I'm hopeful we've got one team applying this spring. Um, it's actually producing metal products on the moon, how you do that. Um, so cross your fingers, we might, might get one team selected finally. Um, another thing that Lone Star College SciFair does, uh, they participate in our Community College Aerospace Scholars Program. Um, that is a program, it was an augmentation to our base funding uh, where community colleges uh, could run this NASA program um, with uh, ro uh, rover design. Um, so it's trying to get even more college students, community college students involved in, in NASA's, uh, NASA's program. Again, yeah, this was right at the beginning of the pandemic. Everything was done virtually to, at the beginning. Uh, they're finally getting up and running in, in person. Um, space Grant, Texas Space Grant also uh, supports different student groups around the state. Uh, we've got a couple different rocket groups, the UT Arlington Aero Mavericks um, and the Texas A&M Rocket Engineering Design Red Team. They're both developing liquid fueled rockets. Um, Rice Eclipse, um, we supported them for their Spaceport America Cup launch um, and also their OWLSAT, the first CubeSat uh, built at Rice. And eclipse opportunities. So I'm getting into a little bit into the future here now. Now we know where these balloons came from. <laughs> the, they did not come from uh, this program, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is actually run, well, it is run by Montana Space Grant, so uh, that's where they were first sighted, right? Um, so Montana Space Grant ran a program nationally for the last eclipse in 2017. They're running it again for this pair of eclipses that we have. Um, it's an annular eclipse in October, and then the total eclipse uh, next April. Um, they have 70 different teams, some on atmospheric science, some on engineering. Um, we were fortunate, uh, Texas Space Grant um, and the University of Houston team was selected. Um, so we're supporting them for their work uh, uh, on their engineering uh, design for this balloon. Um, as well as that, um, we're gonna support uh, the local scouting council. Um, they have two properties. One is pretty close to the annular path. One is directly under the total path. Um, so we'll have events out there um, for scouts, for families, for the public. If you'd like to come out and talk about what you do, we'd love to have volunteers as well. Little plug there. In 2017, we did something similar uh, with the uh, Texas Museum of Science and Technology. Uh, that's no longer around, um, but we had a good event up there in Cedar Park. All right, finally, um, let me talk about this. This is the Spacecraft Exploration Challenge. So again, 2019, um, that was a great year. Remember when? 
um, we had uh, an event at South by Southwest. Uh, so Texas A&M has what's called the Astro Lab. Uh, and the director of that is chair of my board, former astronaut, uh, Greg Chamatov. Um, he developed software called Spacecraft. So he named it after Minecraft, after watching his kids play Minecraft all the time. Um, but a spacecraft uh, where students get to put pieces of spacecraft together. Um, so based on that software, um, there was an uh, engineering challenge hackathon uh, that was put on at South by Southwest. They had half a dozen different teams apply from around the state. Uh, they came, they had three days to work out the challenge, which was to um, have a rover find an astronaut, uh, injured astronaut somewhere on this exoplanet. So in the, the VR software, they developed the whole base, they developed the exoplanet, all the terrain, uh, and the students had to program a rover to go out and find them using artificial intelligence. Um, and they only had three days to do it. Uh, the first place team, uh, funny enough, uh, was students that combined from Texas A&M and UT Austin. So they can work together uh, and great things come of it. Based on this software then, um, Greg started putting together international competitions uh, where students would have to do um, an exercise like this. Um, so an augmentation to the Space Grant Award, um, we, we were awarded that last fall, um, is to put this together. It's called Space Teams now. Um, so we're gonna take that and apply it to middle and high school students. Um, we're partnering with New Mexico and Louisiana. Um, so for the tri-state area, we're gonna install uh, 15 to 100, what we're calling Space Teams Labs. So we're gonna give the students a uh, computer, uh, the VR goggles, um, and we'll set up all the software. And this time there are six different lessons. So they're gonna start with planetary science, learn about that. Then you get to the spacecraft design and assembly. All the physics are correct. Uh, you need to make sure all your electric, electric connections are right, uh, your fuel connections are right um, to build your spacecraft. Then they talk about orbital mechanics and remote sensing of the planet that you're gonna go look at. Um, then you have to land. Uh, so it's a little bit of a flight simulator. Then you have to build your habitat with what you put on your spacecraft to begin with. Um, and then you have to explore the surface. So you've got all these six components and at any time, students uh, can say, well, I'm not able to get as much habitat uh, as I want. So they can go back to the beginning, uh, restart um, and add more to their spacecraft. Um, so it's a, it's a whole lesson program. Uh, it was done as a competition internationally. Uh, now we're doing it as a, as a official lesson uh, program for say an after school program or a summer program. Um, or if teachers want to run it within their classroom, they can do that as well. Okay, that is a summary of a lot of our programs. Um, and uh, thank you for joining me. Um, I'm glad you all came here. If you have any students that we'd like to support, uh, let me know. If you have ideas uh, for supporting students, let me know. And uh, Space Grant is here to help all of you. Thank you. All right, thanks Tim very much for uh, inspiring uh, presentation. I see Jamie has his hand up. Uh, Who's first? Um, you know, I'm fascinated. We all run contracts and grants here and you have some money, but not a lot of money. And this is a blizzard of programs. So you, you've got matching, I guess, from the winners from, from academic institutions, but how are you doing with other types of donors? You must go out to them, right? We do not uh, have very good matching from other donors right now. Uh, that's part of what our National Space Grant Foundation is doing. Uh, they actually have a, uh, a matching program with Microsoft right now. Uh, so we're trying to get funds generated on the national scale. On the Texas scale, uh, I have not been successful in drumming up funds other than from the other academic institutions. Yeah, we should talk. Um...
Thanks, Tim. I really enjoyed that. And wow, what creativity from the students. It's so cool. Um, I'm wondering, you know, in earth science, um, the kind of things that are that are bringing students into thinking about the earth, I think have changed like over the last 50 years. And there are new topics. I mean, climate change, also climate justice, that when I interact with students, they're really um, interested in. And I think it's kind of uh, inviting or challenging earth scientists to think more expansively about the kind of ways and the kind of things that we teach. Um, I'm wondering, as you're interacting with all these students that are getting interested in space, are there topics that they are really interested in that have been like traditionally outside the domain of NASA or, um, yeah, how, how do what the students are bringing or how does what the students are bringing um, maybe change the kinds of work that are getting done? A great question, Ben. Thanks. Yeah. So we do have more that are interested in climate change. Uh, so I would love to figure out how to work more of that into our programs. Um, along with the design challenge, it is still mostly engineering focused. I would love to have a science parallel to that um, if we can work out how to do that. And I think climate change would be a huge part of that as well. Um, there has been a call for um, space law. Um, I think University of Nebraska, Nebraska Space Grant uh, won that contract, but they've got some students uh, that are interested in space law and have been able to fund them as well. So there are definitely yeah, things that students are interested in outside of their traditional space domain uh, that definitely apply. I'd love to increase what we can do. Thank you so much for your talk, really cool. I'm curious, we focus on higher education and the programs of higher education within the space grant. I'm wondering if there's any programs that focuses on connecting like all steps of like students in academia, like those in primary education, higher education, and then those who are already like in their full-time jobs within like NASA affiliated things. You mean putting them all together? Yeah, like if there's like a team like that or if there's opportunity to build a team like that. I'm sure there's opportunity to build a team, definitely, yeah. Especially with design challenge, I've wanted the teams to focus on outreach K through 12. Um, and so that would get the, the K through 12 through the college and then all the way up to their faculty uh, advisor and NASA mentor. Uh, so I think a program like that where um, the, the project might be university focused, uh, but the information could still be relayed uh, to the younger grades and reflect back on, oh, this is where you could go eventually um, with the faculty and NASA, NASA folks. So, so is there a program currently? We do not. Have, okay. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. Beyond design challenge, sort of, we don't have a direct program to connect that entire pipeline in, in one program. On, I, I guess I have two quick, well, I hope are quick questions. The first follows on Benjamin's question. And I guess I'm wondering, um, is there any relationship between the space grant and, and, either the things you're doing or even organizationally and the branch of NASA that does earth observation, because that could be, a, you know, I mean, thinking of things like the new, the new missions that are going to do gravity and, and INSAR, for example, right. Those are downward looking rather than exploration based. And then the other really quick thing I'm wondering about is you said there are three interns coming here. So what are they going to be doing and who are they working with? So for, for the first, uh, first question, um, I forgot the first question. <laughs> Earth observation. Earth observation. Okay. The uh, based on what the students choose to do in terms of the fellowships and the internships, uh, those can definitely be Earth science based. Um, and then at the end, we can figure out uh, what mission directorate they fall under. Um, we have not put in a pathway to say, all right, we're definitely doing earth-based science and then fill in the, the students afterwards all right and then the second part um we should add that a lot of fellowship applicants are nicer and swap all those all those competitive applicants um even the president the don, don was commenting that the the fellowship applications were all um SWAT and NISAR and, and really impressive applications. 
Yeah, Don is uh, the associate director here at UT, if you didn't know, um, and reviews a lot of the fellowship applications. Uh, but then, okay, and Don is going to help support the three students that are coming this summer. What are they going to be doing? Do, do we know yet? Uh, a P star, your rope flipper, and uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, planetary science and technology for astrobiology research in the Arctic, uh, Coldex, the NSF Coldex Science Technology Center in the Antarctic, and then the engineers like to work on Europa Clipper. So um, they'll, they'll do that. We don't know what the distribution is. Depends on the kids. <laughs> Who's next? Oh, there you go. So how did you decide that that's the kind of thing that the, the students this year are gonna work on? How did, that come about like if they want to do other planetary stuff is there the opportunity to kind of recommend projects for future years or yes definitely yeah if you have an opportunity that you'd like to have a student funded for the summer uh let me know um beyond space grant um i mentioned texas a&m kingsville and laredo college they have some uh, murup funding that's minority institution funding uh, to get students out into the world and learn a broader, uh, get a broader experience um, as well. So yeah, if you have ideas, please let me know. Yeah, it seems like a, an amazing effort to kind of prepare the next generation for, for, for our challenges, not only on earth, like in universe case. I'm wondering if there is a um, collaboration or a, a program that works not only within the American system, because it seems like an earthy kind of effort with this um, European Space Agency or any other agency that students are integrated and working together? Good question, yeah. So right now we don't have any international partners um, because we are funded directly by Congress. All the students have to be US citizens. Um, so we could definitely collaborate with other, other institutions, but we couldn't provide them funding. Um, the one, it's in my backup slides, uh, the GLEE Artemis proposal, it's G-L-E-E. -E. Uh, it's called the Great Lunar Exploration for Everyone. Um, that is actually an international competition. So for all the US students, um, NASA is providing funding, but international teams can apply to that as well. Touchdown. Um, <clears throat> so another thing that stood out to me is that your the space grant connects so many different institution types. And I, the anecdote that you shared about the student in the video um, and their path was really inspiring. I have two questions. One is, do you do uh, longitudinal tracking of students to kind of understand what the impacts are on their educational pathways? And um, yeah, can you point us to that? And then the second one is what has been, I guess, anecdotally your experience with working across those different kind of institution types and connecting students with different opportunities that um, might transcend a single institution? Uh, so first, yes, for longitudinal tracking, we track all the students that we, we give awards to. Um, I forgot to mention I think our latest numbers are 95% respond back to us, which is good. And 85% have stayed in the STEM area, which is really good. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, yeah, and, and they don't they don't stray far from, from STEM. Um, and then... Just your experience working across those institutions. Uh, um, so yeah, it is a great variety of institutions, the community colleges, the A&M and UT. Um, a lot depends on the faculty that we get connected with. Um, so we have great relationships with San Jacinto College and um, Lone Star College and now Houston Community College, just because we found those faculty that really embrace what Space Grant is and what, what it can do. 
Um, so if you can help us make those connections at other colleges or even other departments within those colleges, um, that, would, that would be great. Thank you, a really nice talk. And uh, I'm really amazed by the creativity by the students. I like the paper furniture idea. <laughs> um, and just a quick comment on the NYSAR and the INSAR thing. And uh, we have an NSF grant going on here at UTIC and we're developing, further developing a, a processing tool, a GMT SAR and uh, for the INSAR data. And uh, we're currently developing the Python interface and also preparing for the NYSAR. Uh, so, and, you know, we heard about the NISA will go on the data, a lot of data will go on the cloud, and we are preparing the tool for that. And if any students are interested in that, we can definitely work together, you know, to make that happen. Because I think downstream, the uh, application of the raw NISA is the data are really important as well. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. That's great. We have a lot of computer programmers, so we should talk. One comment, if you could explain what NISAR is, since not everyone probably is familiar. All right. Uh, so um, so I've, I'm still learning on that. I know what INSAR is, uh, but I just uh, from the data volume is uh, quite huge. Uh, I think it's the 30 terabytes per year that was in the proposal. And um, so yeah, it's a lot of data to process and uh, we need parallel computing power and we need some good tools to make the GMT SAR to be applica applicable on all the operating system and that kind of thing. And uh, that's the goal of the proposal, yeah. And also we are developing, uh, we are collaborating with uh, UCSD and um, uh, at U uh, UT, the CSE, we, we are developing some tools to process the NISA data. So that's our uh, colleagues over there, they are working on that. That's great. And I'm glad you mentioned uh, California because we are trying to work together more with our other space grant uh, colleagues. That's why we have our meetings twice a year is to learn what each other are doing and, and see where we can collaborate. Um, if, yeah, if we don't have the funding to send a student to California, maybe they have funding to send California student here or something like that. Okay, we're at 1130. Is there any final quick questions that the audience would like to ask? If not, I'll say let's thank you, Tim, very much.